Okay. Hello, everybody. I will first ask you uh, how many of you know something about Git or have you used it? So it's a good way. Okay. Uh, I would try to cover the specifically the Git development, uh, some general advices, but specifically Git for Joomla. Uh, I'm Roberto, I'm a member of the PLT, a CMS contributor, member of the Joomla bug squad and security team. Uh, I work as PHP and JavaScript developer, and I am freelance. This is, my, this is me, really. My family, the pig is not, <laughs> is not mine. <laughs> not sure, but, <laughs> and this is not my wife. <laughs> So what is Git? Uh, Git is a distributed version control system. The, it's compatible, we will, uh, I will explain it later. It's compatible with all the operating systems for teams or for single developers that uh, to control the version of files, uh, documents. It, it doesn't have to be uh, source code or PHP or JavaScript. It works for just for files to write a blog or for anything. It records change to files, revert files back, keeping an history, and make you able to review changes over, over time. Uh, you can see who changes what and detect fastly the issues on the, that have been introduced in your code. This is the history of version control systems. Initially, there was nothing. Uh, Later, pe people were copy pasting. It's basically there are a lot of people doing it now, <laughs> still doing it now. Then there was a thing called local uh, BCS that it, it was just a program that stored all the changes locally. Uh, then uh, centralized virtual uh, version control systems that is one server and clients that connected to it, and finally. What is Git? That is a distributed version control system. There are more distributed control version systems like Mercury or Bazaar, but this is the most used mainly for the web development. So distributed control systems, this is the difference. Uh, some people will know uh, SVN. SVN is it was the most uh, version control system used in the past. And this is the model. Uh, main central uh, server and the clients with developers working on it. Git changes that and makes each station it's a server itself. So everybody in the in each workstation there is a full copy of the code and uh, it has some benefits that it's easier to set up because uh, uh, with SVN you have to deal with the server and with Git, it's really easy to set up. You just install <coughs> on your machine and run, uh, initialize the repository. You don't have uh, the data loss risk because if you only have all the source code here, if you lose th this machine, all is lost. So now you have a full copy here, 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 here. If something goes wrong, uh, it is still, uh, you, you are able to recover it from any machine. Uh, you can review, uh, every uh, work extension has a full local copy, so they can review changes locally and being disconnected for five days, and then connect to the public repository and push data. It uh, uh, has a better speed because uh, the, uh, you merge changes locally so you don't have to wait to the server to tell you that this change has been merged. <laughs> I will try, if you know uh, Git, I will try to do this fast, to go to the dirty stuff. Uh, you, you could work independently, and then it comes GitHub. GitHub is a layer over Git that allows, extend its functionalities. Uh, of course, you don't have to set up a server because GitHub hosts servers for you. Uh, gives you a cool visual interface that for done by cool people that worry about things like user experience to put things in the right place, not 
like everybody does. You can search issues and they are also tracked by Google. So when you search on Google, the issues are there. People is able to comment, tag the issues, show stats about the co uh, contributions, and also give credits to each contributor. So if I contribute to three open source um, projects, I uh, in my uh, GitHub profile, I'm shown uh, as a contributor. And it also allows to uh, integrate third part solutions like Travis, Jenkins. It allows you to, control, to connect it to Jira for, uh, track, uh, for, track, for tasks. And uh, how it, it's the relation between G Git and Joomla. Uh, you, you require, uh, Git is required to contribute. You have to learn to use it, but not just for Joomla. If you want to contribute to any open source code, uh, I mean, this is a developer skill that you need everywhere. And, and Git is for uh, designers, front-enders, and coders. And we have a main repository that is in the Joomla account. That's the Joomla-CMS. There is another for the framework. Uh, this is for uh, Joomla extensions that, for example, is the web installer. The light core, that is the, what is going to happen in the 3.4 series. It's already there. Uh, even being empty, and then there are uh, uh, there is a repository for parallel projects. What is, for example, the frontenders working group, or the translation of the comlocalize that is a new translator for Joomla. So, what is the desired schem schema that we want to build to contribute to Joomla? We have a main upstream. This is the recommendation that by GitHub. That this is the main upstream. That is uh, the Joomla repository. Then we have the origin. That is the fork you are going to is your copy. You copy this into your GitHub account. So instead of accessing it to it like uh, accessing it like uh, Joomla dash slash uh, uh, Joomla CMS, you access like PHP Roberto dash uh, Joomla CMS. And then you have your local fork. That is your local machine. You can connect to both. These are called remote servers. They uh, store the code. But you can have a different copy there, different code there. And this is the main source uh, that, store that you have to check frequently to, for, to get the updates. But this is your, your stuff is there. Uh, you have a local copy where uh, now are, we are going to see what happens there. Uh, first of all, you have for to have this scheme, the first part is to fork the Joomla CMS repository. There is a button there where you have to click, and basically it copies everything into your own user there. There is also, once you copy, you have the URL. That's the URL that you need to, to clone the repository. I mean, the clone is to put the repository, all the code, locally on your machine. So, oh, we are using Terminal. <laughs> I know that not everybody loves Terminal, but uh, Terminal has a reason to use it. Uh, it works on all the operating systems. You have to use it most of the times anyway, because uh, you have to do something specific, that, and then you don't realize how to, use, how to do it. You, it's easier to understand how we get, it works. And if there is an error, you have the terminal there throwing you the errors. To help you with the terminal, there, are a thing, there is a thing called aliases. This is uh, fast commands that you can customize. Well, git commands are not something easy to learn, to remember. And you can create your own commands to, for a fast management. These are the most uh, global commands, and almost every developer uses them. And that's basically shortcuts for the common tasks that you are going to do. Uh, this is my, my aliases are in that list. If you want to use it, I have, uh, I have them updated, updated. And 
I put it on my local in any machine that I work. So you can contribute. I think have things like undo last. That that means this command is uh, shortcutted to this. To do a reset card, the, the command to save everything, uh, all this line, is uh, reduced to re or resum resumed to this. Oof, I need water. Uh, this is the most common uh, aliases that almost everybody uses, but you can create yours, and I will be happy if you contribute them. Mm. No. Uh, now we are going to clone the fork that we, which URL you we get before. We are going to clone it locally. Basically, it's this command. Uh, I'm telling that git clone the fork URL. That's that, and then we will create a Joomla dash CMS. Uh, folder on my local machine. Ideally, you should do this on the uh, uh, public uh, web server folder to be able to see the website. Then we have to set up the upstream server. On our previous model, I will show it later, everything. Uh, on our previous model, we have the main source code where we are going to collaborate with other developers. So we have to connect it to say to initialize it as a remote server on our setup. And this is done with the git remote add upstream. This is, uh, I'm working with a remote. I would like to add it. The name is going to be upstream. This is the name that I give you to the remote server. And this is the URL that you pick from here. Uh, then all the code is, is uh, the repository as the remote, but nothing happens. You only get a new connection to a server where you can uh, connect. The next command, uh, the, well, I will skip it to talk about branches. Git remote show. If you do git remote show and the name of the server, for example, it will detail. I don't have the terminal here. No. But if you uh, specify a name, you get with git remote show, you get the list of all the servers. Git remote show. And with git remote and the name of the server, git remote upstream, you get the details about that server. So it tells you the URL and you can do things like this. They, uh, we will talk about this later, is to get a full copy of the remote server and store it locally. But then we have to learn uh, about branches. I'm happy that you know Git because it will make it easier. Uh, Git is based on SHA, hashes of, uh, for files and folders. So each change you do, it stores the say the, of the of the files, and then you can uh, a difference with SVN is that you can create branches. Branches is that uh, I'm working on a main task, and uh, when I'm here, I decide to go for, this is the master branch, and I decide that I have to tr work on some stuff to test something that a client a customer reported. So I have to leave what I'm doing, leave the master, create a new branch, and work on an issue. My master uh, branch is always uh, kept clean. You have to, clean, to keep a, a branch clean to be sure that you are able to, to have a local copy exactly that the same that is online. So this is our branch that where we are going to work, and we create a new commit, this is there, and the master, evolutions and on its way, but then after that we can merge both. So all the work I've been, been doing in parallel is finally getting merged on a single. 
there is a, a, a book that I recommend to, to you to consult, it, uh, or every, everything is detailed. This is uh, like an introduction, so I cannot give you details, but the book is very well explained. Then to manage branches, we have the git branch, and if you use my alias, this git br, uh, if you use the command as it is, it shows you the list of branches that you have in your code. Basically, it's the same that we have here. This is a list of branches that are active on the upstream, but we will show it later. If you want to create a branch, you have to do git branch and the name of the branch that you want to create. If you want to create a branch and enter on it, that is something that you will do uh, commonly, git checkout b the branch and it will create automatically a branch name it like with this name and enter on that so enter it means that the head this head is moved from the master to the branch to the cool branch that we have created uh, for the late for the lead, uh, uh, existing branch is the same with a d modifier that will remove delete the, the branch, but it only will only remove it if the the code there is already merged on the main branch to uh, be sure that you cannot remove code, that uh, you do not lose code. code. And if you really want to remove a branch, delete it, you have to use the uppercase D, D to remove the branch. Uh, specifically the grid branching, the, the management of branches is, is on that page. I will put this uh, presentation uh, on the slider and uh, slide share so you can consult it later. Then we have to merge to put everything inside the uh, Homer stomach. And this is an example of a, a situation of the development. We have the, main, the master branch that is clean, with the, which is supposed to be stable. And then we have branches. This is the issue 91, 92, uh, dummy that I have. And the git merge command is to put everything in the same, in the same uh, branch. Just we'll create a branch that we will see later that we can modify it that uh, modify that it's uh, all together in the same branch. Th that's the git merge command. As I said, it's very, very uh, important that you keep your master branch. And in the, this is the master is the common name of the uh, root branch and all the uh, projects. But specifically in Joomla, we have a branch called staging, staging. That's the branch that contains the most uh, the the code that you have to use to create from the, your uh, starting point for your contributions. So it's important that you use staging instead of master in Joomla. And then we have another branch that is git dash and the three dot whatever. That's the current version in development. So if you are developing a feature that you think that it will be in 3.4 series, you have to always take this as a, the source of your code. Uh, to get the, uh, the code from a server, we have two ways of doing it. Uh, let me search it. With the model. You have two ways of doing of getting the code that is here and put it in your local machine. One way is just telling git pal, I will show the command later, git pal, the name of the server, where, uh, git pal origin, uh, upstream, for example, origin, the server of where you want to get the code, and the destination branch, the branch that you want to get. So if I want to get the upstream master branch, I will write git pal upstream master with a space, and then I will, uh, the code of the master branch will be automatically merged in my current branch. Uh, and the same with origin. There is another way that I recommend you, that is to use fetch, which basically 
what fetch does is to create this copy on your local fork, on your local machine. So you do load like a full copy of the repository here, and then you can manually merge things. This is useful because you can uh, explore what has been done on the master server without going to GitHub. You can do it locally. And if there is a conflict, you can search in the history of the upstream to see what happened. And uh, basically, it's recommended that you merge things locally and then push with all the code merge. If you do git pal, uh, if something fails, it's uh, harder to debug and to fix the conflicts. So to get the same code with git fetch, we will use git fetch upstream and then merge the code manually. That suppose that I, I want to merge the code that is an in upstream and the uh, stacking branch. The same with git pal will be git pal upstream stacking. Get that code and put it in any branch that I am in the, in the branch that I am active. Uh, there is another command that you have to learn. That uh, there are two basic commands, basic commands that are git log and git status. Uh, they are used everywhere to know the history of the commits. But this is the latest commit, the previous and the previous. Uh, but as you can see, you, uh, there is only three commits there. It's all the page uh, with uh, to show only only uh, all the screen to show only three commits. So if you use my aliases or uh, common aliases, there is, this is the same view with the git l alias. You get a full list of the commits, who did it, when they did it, and where are the active branches. So this is where the origin server master is, and my local head, the origin head is there. And this is a uh, origin config undefined. This is a branch on origin. Is there? That's because I also I have the local copy of the server, so it tells me where is each server pointing at each branch. With the log, uh, you usually uh, have a list of commands that are commonly used. With l libraries Joomla will uh, just show the changes done to this file. So instead of uh, seeing all the history of the of the code you only see what happened to this library uh, if you want to search the commits from one user you add the modifier author and it will show you the history if you want to search uh, for a uh, uh, for a text on the commit messages you do it with grep and then you have a status. A status is very important because Git uh, has a different status of files that I will show you now that are uh, untracked. The, fil uh, the file is not tracked by Git. There is files that are unmodified, like this one in red. This is unmodified. No, this is modified, sorry. Uh, uh, modified will not be shown there at all. There is modified. This is this file is in red because it's modified. It's in Spanish, sorry. And there is, uh, then is a stage files. That is files that we have mer uh, marked to be merged in, uh, in to be uh, sent in our next commits, next commit. So if I do a commit now that is uh, storing a new version locally, uh, a new hash, this will be commit. I will, we will see it now. This is the workflow. When you first want to track a file, you add it. Then you can remove it always, of course. And then you edit. There's modified. Git detects it as modified. Uh, the, you mark it as a stage. That, that means that it's going to be commit. And if not, you can always unstage. Now, let's do a first commit. First of all, you have to ensure that you are on the master branch in our case will be a staging branch if you are uh, doing a fast part for git for joomla uh, then go there and ensure that you update this branch this can be done with, with the previous uh, 
with the git pal or git fetch. So choose anything, but be sure that it's updated and clean. You have no commit, you never do a commit there. From there, you create a new branch that we call, we will call it files error because the, the title has to be descriptive. You can use the issue number, but I recommend to use something descriptive. Uh, we create the branch, then we will go to our ID and start modifying the files. Git will track all the changes done in, in the files and then show us the previous window like this. Or you have modified these files, what would you want to include in the commit? Uh, and the way we add files to the stacking is with git add. add. Git add templates will add all the templates folder of the files modified inside this folder will be uh, marked as going to be merged. So the most common git add commands or modifiers are git add uppercase A is to add all the files. Git add dot is to add the new files. It won't uh, add the, the remo deleted files, for example. And git add u uh, adds only the modified files. Uh, the most common is to use that, but the, you can be selective to add files to the, to the stacking. Uh, committing your changes. To commit, we will use the git commit command that is quite simple. This is the M that is from message. This is the message we have to mark for this commit that people will be able to search. Uh, we will soon start using the uh, descriptive tags for the commits. This means improvement. We will use also uh, fix for box, uh, lang for language, SQL for SQL queries. There are a lot, uh, list of tags that we are going to add to the contributing from the server. After doing a commit, always do a git status to be sure that you have commit everything or you have commit, uh, commit something that you don't want to commit. So you can revert it before pushing to the server. If you want to undo your last commit, you can use this ugly command or use my alias that is undo last. And it reverses the, the commit, but without removing the change done to the files. So uh, the, the files will uh, appear like modified, but not in a commit. And if you forgot to add a file to a commit, you can use the amen alias. This is the ugly command, and this is my alias, git amen. And you just uh, add a new file to a commit that you have already done. So if I forgot to add a, a file, this is the message that will appear, but there is a no a new commit message. I just amen, I say that uh, there is a new file to be inside this commit. And then we have to, pass our code to the fork. To pass is just to, to move this branch from here to our origin. This is our fork and this is the upstream server. So this is, pass basically is to move this branch from here to there. It's quite easy and it's that command. Pass origin, this means the server where we want to pass and the name of the branch that we want to put there. Once there, what we have to do is to create an, a pull request. Uh, when you log on Joomla, on GitHub, sorry, it will automatically detect most of the times that you have a new branch. This is dumb branch, but it will be the errors branch. And you can directly click there to go to the pull request form where you start submitting all the information. Of it, if this is not recognized as a new branch by GitHub, you can always pass, push, uh, click here. Uh, select the branch that you want to, uh, in this example, it would be fields error, and then click the compare and pull request view. On your uh, pull request, there are some recommendations to put in the as message or, uh, to fill the, uh, the pull request form. You have to put there an informative title, describe the issue with details, what happens. If you can add the screenshots, 
it's free. You can do it, and it's fast. The, I made almost nobody puts screenshots on the on the issues, and I don't. I cannot understand it. If it's a button that has to be moved or have to be fixed, and a screenshot is the faster way to describe what's happening. And at testing instru instructions is very important now. The new tracker already uh, has a template that uh, makes these things easier. For testing instruction, is already there, asking you to put the content there. If you are submitting a feature, you have to put here the document uh, of, of the changes done uh, on the repository and what it's supposed to do. So if you uh, created a plugin, you have to describe what's happening with his, that plugin, what it's supposed to do, and how to test it. Uh, if you have a, a branch or a pull request, there is people that uses the, uh, the pull request as a work in progress. I do not recommend that because there is people that is going to see them and probably test it. And we have not a lot of testers. So let's be sure that w when we ask for a test, it's because the work is done and it, you have finalists. So if you, don't, uh, if you already have a pull request and you are using it as a work in progress, be sure to say that if this is a work in progress, please don't test it uh, now. Uh, this is a good place also if you want to, you, have, you think that someone is good to review your work, if you think that Michael, Michael Baker, for example, all, everything is done by Michael, <laughs> so not, not contact him, but if you think that there is someone that is worth to review your work, you can part, uh, include him with the uh, ad and the, and the uh, username of GitHub. So for me, it will be ad and PHP Roberto. I will be happy to help you. <laughs> and this, uh, when you cr uh, submit the form, uh, before submitting the form, you also be sure that you review all the code. Because I found that once of each three times, I put their code that I don't want to be there. So this is the better place to have a final look and see if it's you have made a mistake, you put uh, you include the things that you don't want there, uh, you have, uh, even for code style issues, it's easy to, be, to see, see all, everything there. Avoid to send 10 commits for 10 lines. That means that there is people that, OK, I will change this word. I send a commit. I change another word, send another commit. And then the history of the repository becomes a mess because uh, it's a, there is no meaning on the, on the log history. Everything is like I submitted a, a, a word. If we all do that, we are uh, killing the history, the meaning of the history. Be sure that you follow the GitHub coding standards. Joomla has a coding standard repository uh, that is easily searchable in Google. And it's required to include text now, uh, code there to follow the coding standards. It means a coding standard says that this bracket has to be here and not here, or you have to leave a space after a, an if statement, things like that. So be sure that you use the Joomla coding standard. If you modify assets, like CSS files, JavaScript files, be sure that you include the mani, mani file and the unminified files. No, uh, the, for the coding standards, you mean? No, no, sorry. Um, I mean, if you want to uh, uh, do a pull request, do you have any local repository? Do you have to do a pull request for the uh, pull configuration of the PHP It's already done. The, the, it's a good question because uh, on, a normal reposit on a normal Git workflow, you will need to tell uh, there is a Git ignore file that is commenting Peter, where you put all the files that uh, does not have to be tracked by Git, and you, uh, I cannot show it there. Well, I will try it later on the questions. 
but Joomla is already done. All the configuration and the ignore files are there. So you can uh, you only have to worry about your code. If you include uh, CSS code, that's uh, a lot of people do that. Ensure that the less file that is compiled is already there. You modify directly the less file. Uh, and once you submit a pull request, you are going to have critic, people critic, sign you, uh, be open to it. Uh, you will improve as developer. Uh, there is no problem with having a, pr uh, a mistake in your code, something to learn. Uh, it will avoid you being blamed if something if you break the CMS and you break uh, millions of websites. You don't want that. So it's a good thing. And the people that review your pull request is investing time on teaching you something. So be grateful for that and open to to improve and to say thanks. And if you really don't know how to proceed, ask for help. Joomla has a lot of people now that we have reviewed every day all the pull requests. There is no pull request without <coughs> answer. This is something that we can we have improved a lot. So don't worry. The, my pull request was a, a big shit, and I was helped by, by people that helped me in my code to, to make my code uh, something like I, it only took me five months to get that pull request made. So, and you are learning for free. Uh, once you submit your PR, you are criticized. You are probably going to be there like two months waiting for match because you need tests. People that uh, goes to the repository, see what's happened, L uh, read your details of the uh, of the issue and test it. Meanwhile, you have to be sure that you keep your peer pull request up to date. That <coughs> means that you have to, if you want to fix something that someone uh, suggested you, you can add a local commit and then pass again. It will be added automatically to the pull request. It has commit and push. Uh, if you, uh, the workflow will be to get, rebase the code from the origin server, uh, the upstream server that we talked before, put it on your, on your local copy, and then rebase. That's a command that uh, we are going to, we are going to see now. Squash. It means that if you have ten commits, like we said before, because you are comfortable doing that, be sure, be sure that you don't lose anything. That's okay, but before pushing, be sure that you squash your commits. So what's a git rebase? Git rebase, this is the previous uh, schema that we said. These are three branches. The master branch will be there, and this is changed down to this branch. And this, uh, this master uh, this branch is at the same point on the master branch. So when you do a git rebase, we are telling here that we want to reorganize my current branch based on the content of the upstream stacking branch. So what will happen? That all these uh, commits will be put at the end of this commit. So it will be added here, and it's very, very cool to have something like that where there are no uh, forks or signs. Uh, all the history is kept in a good way. Once you, uh, you have done the rebase, uh, you can push your changes. You have changed the history of your working branch, so you have to push the changes with the force command. That will update your uh, pull request with uh, the code done properly. If you don't do that, this, probably your first commit will be here, then you get the latest uh, commits done to the master repository. So there are like 50 commits over yours, and then whatever you have to meet later. So it's always, if you do that, it will be nothing and two commits even being done one three months ago and one this week. Uh, for revising, there is also a, 
a lot of t to talk about. This is the the, URL, uh, the specific URL for the book. Merging is like uh, it will be. Uh, I'm going to try to show it. This is this is done. Uh, this is a merge. You can see that this is a split, the, a fork, and then the, it returns because it was merged here. If you do a rebase, it will be shown like this. So it, this will be removed and will be a linear history that is something cool to, to have, easier to track. And also for uh, conflicts, if you do a rebase, uh, uh, dash E, you will fix conflicts one at a time. And uh, you will know which uh, commit conflicts with your code. It's an interactive way of rebashing and it's doing change moving one uh, once a time it puts first this commit here and it checks for conflicts if you have conflict you can uh, fix them and say okay git rebase continue and it will continue with the new commit if everything goes okay okay if it, there is another conflict you have to fix it but f to for conflicts it's easier <coughs> Sorry? Yes, I will, try. I will try. Never replace a collaborative branch. This means that if it's not only you who is working in a branch, be sure that you don't do the previous uh, this process because you will break your mate's history. So if you are working in a collaborative branch, the right way is to keep things updated. And once you are going to submit that to the CMS, do a global rebase to be sure that the code is, is included properly. Let's do it fast. The squash commits is good. You have a list of commits that you want to put in one. Uh, when you do this command, this git rebase interactive with versus tagging, it shows you the list of commits that are the difference uh, with the stagging branch and tells you, okay, what do you want to do with these commits? You can reward, that means, okay, I will include this comment, this commit, but I will rename. I will change the commit message. This is going to be a squash, S, 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 squash, 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 and I want to keep that. So, so pick it. They will be picked, and as a result, only two commit messages are there. Questions? Not sure if you have, we have time for questions. If not, I will say like Brian Timan, if you buy me a beer, I will be happy to help. <laughs>